Hey guys, this is Matt Kaur from ControlPaint.com, and today let's paint a glass marble. Now in the last video we left off with this block in. It doesn't look very realistic, but it gives us a great starting point. Because when we look at each of these areas of color, they're essentially an average. Well, the process of refining for me is to lock the transparent pixels, or any other sort of edge control you want to do, and then begin to get a little bit more specific. So for instance, near the top of this, it gets a little bit darker. So I can use the brush tool and select the color that I already have here, and then just make it a little bit darker. So as I paint that in, I'm using the lock transparent pixels to help me paint inside the lines. But you can see that selecting that color was a lot easier than just starting from scratch. I can also say that there's a reflection of the camera right here in the center, and that it's a little bit lighter. So I'd select the color as a starting point here, and then I'd move it a little bit lighter and maybe a little bit less saturated. So I'm really looking at relative color. I'm not just picking each color from the vacuum. Instead, I'm using the surrounding colors as a reference point. Another thing to notice from the reference is there's a bit of colored haloing around this reflective highlight. So for that, I might make a separate layer, select my starting color here, and then figure out the relative difference. And then I can paint that in here. If I want to make it a little bit brighter still, I can nudge that color a little bit and continue to paint. And if I wanted to, this is when I could begin to add detail. So here I'm using a very basic airbrush, but I could instead use a brush that has a little bit more texture to it. And so in this way, I'm not just picking an accurate color, I'm also considering the sort of brush texture. I'm really trying to indicate that surface. But the changes now are all very subtle. As I paint, I ask myself, is the part of the reference I'm looking at lighter or darker than what I currently have in my image? and then I'll adjust accordingly, just a little bit. So I'll often start by selecting the color and then move it either a little bit up or a little bit down. But for the time being, I'm still gonna keep these as separate layers. So here I have a single layer that is this dark area. So I'm gonna paint below that. Now I'm gonna start working on the lighter area. And even though I've sped up the footage here, I'm just doing the exact same thing. I am breaking down an area of flat color into slight variations. A little lighter, a little darker, a little more saturated, a little less saturated. And then I'll follow the exact same process here with my shadow. So here I am actually gonna flatten all the shadow layers together to be a single layer. And once again, I'm going to use the existing color I have as a bit of a reference point, and then paint in slight changes, whether they're lighter or darker, until it begins to approach the example I'm looking at in my reference. Now that my image is beginning to come together, I'm gonna to start adding in the little tiny details. Again, I wanna work in passes, making sure the whole image is looking correct before I get tied into these tiny little things. But now it's time to zoom in on a new layer and begin to paint in these little divots in the glass. So I'm just gonna select colors that are already in my image and paint in those little tiny imperfections. So once you've got all the correct colors laid in, then the next step is just to blend between them. But no matter how you do it, whether it's just with the brush tool or with smudge tool, this is when you start looking at how colors transition from one to the next. Sometimes it might be soft, sometimes it might be hard, and that says a lot about the material and the type of lighting. And then at the very end of the process, I like to paint with a large airbrush, very gently, just to kind of flatten out certain areas. Because sometimes as you begin to add in all these little tiny details, you end up with too much visual noise and clutter. And then I'll erase that away where it got a little too heavy handed, specifically here where I want to retain that sharpness and that pop of a highlight. As long as you started with a pretty nice block in, it's gonna be much easier to do this refining phase with confidence because you're really just adding detail and fixing edges. But if you wanna paint like this, you just have to understand the basic principles. We 
used locked transparent pixels to stay painting inside the lines as we refined our areas of color. Then once everything was looking pretty good, we flattened it all together and began to work on our edge control using on-screen blending and the smudge tool. Now, if you want to know more about either of those techniques, follow the links at the bottom of the post and you can watch videos that explain them in depth. Have fun painting. Thanks for coming to the site, guys.